hello guys hope you all are fine so today our topic is building a redux persister hook actually those who use redux library they also know about redux persist which helps to uh, persist or store the redux state on the local storage but those who use hooks they also you may use reducers by the help of a hook called use reducer but if you want to persist or store the state of a reducer inside a local storage then that is not possible actually and for that we need to build a custom react hook which will help us to persist the redux state of our application or anything you can say so here we can see that we have a simple application a counter application that this application can decrease the counter and also can increase the counter okay and after i refresh this page you see my counter remains same even after refreshing if i actually delete that page and again come back to this page see my counter didn't change because my redux use redux state is persisted so in this tutorial we will see how to do that very easily though it's very easy to do in react but in next.js it's very tough because we don't have access to the local variable everywhere we only have access to local variables i mean the local storage variable in the next.js in either react lifecycle methods or inside the use effect hook so that's why it's become challenging in implementing redux persist inside next.js so i will build today actually i have built today a redux persist hook that works for both react and also for next.js well i can also uh, build the hook with along with you but i think that it will be more better to explain the each line of code that i have written and it will save more time to make the video and also the video will be short and fixed so let's get started at how i made this reducer that persisted my redux state so at first you can see that there are some file opens here okay number of my first file is this component which is this app component this this component so this component is nothing but uh, uh, this component is nothing but it has uh, two buttons and it dispatches two functions or triggers two actions increase and decrease when we click the increase button and we, we click the decrease button then these two dispatch function updates the use reducer state and finally the number is give, being updated from uh, because the state is being changed simple no more nothing more than this in this component just increase and decrease to dispatch functions are being called by the on click function on click handler so this was my counter component so now if i go to my uh, counter reducer you can see that okay i have an initial state i have an action type and two action increase and decrease and i also have a count reducer in this count reducer i am defining two action again and if increase action we will increase the count if decrease action we will decrease the count and so on and now after that i have one more custom hook called use activation what is this use activation this use activation is this hook and this hook is very small and simple hook because if i want to call if i want to use this reducer in five components then what will happen is that i at first i have to uh, call uh, import this reducer then i have to import this initial state then i can call use reducer like that but as it's very tiresome to write same code again and again in five components and to import reducer import initial state in five component and then again call the use reducer on five components is very very 
exhausting and time consuming so this hook actually activates the reducer instantly and give me the power of accessing the state and dispatch nothing more so we can see that this use activation has three things it will take a reducer it will take an initial state and it will take a persistence so if uh, the persistence is a boolean value or boolean parameter and if the persistence is true then the hook will get the use persistent reducer that we will make in a very short time and otherwise if persistence value is not true then we will say that okay we want to use a normal reducer instead of a use persist reducer that we will make so that's why this true and false can determine we will use the persistent or local storage feature or not by depending on this persistent value and then it will return the state and dispatch for me so it's very easy so you can see that in my counter reducer js i am calling another function called counter reducer props and in this side we i am activating my reducer with three things my i am passing the reducer i am passing the initial state and i true because i want to why uh, it is true because i want to store this state in local storage i want to persist this that's why it's true very easy now we can know what this use activation function do it does it just simplifies some code so that we don't need to rewrite those now what i have to do is explain you that inside my activator hook i have a use persistent reducer hook and what is this use persist reducer hook is made of so let's see the actual code and this is the use persistent reducer hook so before making this hook we need to know what will be our key in which key we will store the uh, state of our reducer see when a user defines a reducer something like this something like this count reducer so if he uh, defines this count reducer and he needs another reducer definitely he will rename it with something unique definitely he will not name another user also count reducer another user also count as a developer we always name unique about these reducers right so that's why these names will be always be unique because we cannot use same name for two reducers or two reducing states right so these names will be always unique so we can think that this name can be a unique key also for storing the state in our local storage yes you are right so now what we will think that we will use the key is equal to reducer dot name because we are passing that reducer okay we are passing that reducer in our initial state in our persist reducer so the key will be our reducer dot name now we will modify this reducer before passing it to our use reducer because this use persisted reducer also take the help of the use reducer function okay the, this use persisted reducer is also dependent on use reducer function so before passing it to the use reducer we will do what we will do is that we will modify this reducer after modifying this reducer we will use callback so that this function is memoized and after that we will pass this modified reducer inside the use reducer now the question comes that why we will modify this reducer see at first we can see that in our count reducer we can only change state by dispatching some actions such as increase and decrease but these are user defined actions but if you want to change a reducer state we also need to add some actions from ourselves so that we can manipulate the state because we cannot manipulate the state or the persistent state by using these two actions obviously so for that reason what we will do is add our own custom actions along with the user's actions so let's see how the modify reducer function works modify reducer is a function that takes a reducer and returns a new modified reducer okay it takes a reducer and returns a new reducer function see this function is also a reducer and this function is also a reducer see same same reducer format so what we will do is 
this reducer function will always get two props we all know that this is state and action so if my action is persist see this is my new action that i introducing so if my new action is persist what will i do i will return the state with action dot payload that will i will give or i will provide with the action otherwise the default is what it is return reducer of state of action that means i am calling the reducer that is passed into here with state and action that i got okay that with the state and action actually i got so when i will return the function it will just return me a function with this reducer okay this reducer will be available and then after that when i will call this returned function then this reducer will be uh, triggered and uh, we will pass the state and action see we are passing the state and action here uh, oh so, sorry uh, modified reducer will pass the state and action because it is the work of is the purpose of use reducer to pass the state and actions okay it's not our responsibility is the responsibility of use reducer to pass the state and action here so when he will call this mode this new returned function or return reducer then the reducer will get called then you can imagine that okay then it will go here come here and see if the action type is increased if the action type is decreased or if it's default if it's default it will return state but if its action type is increased it will return this one or return this one so by default it will return that thing that this reduce reducer function will return him okay so this way you we modify the reducer by adding our own actions along with the user's action i hope i could explain this modify reducer function very well but if not then i will suggest you to re watch this video i then i think it will be more clear so now we i am calling modified reducer is a variable so i am calling the modified reducer function with the reducer okay this reducer that is getting getting passed in the use persisted reducer so it will go and make a new modified reducer this reducer function it will return us this function and then it will come but as it return us a function this function will be modified by use callback function so that this function is memoized and then this reducer function and this uh, memoized function depends upon reducer that means when this reducer will change then use callback function will change otherwise it will not change at all that means reducer function will never ever change when we will call the, so this use callback function will only be created just for once and we don't have to worry because it will always create just for once not for many times so it will give us a performance boost next after we get the our cast cast function or cast modified function then what we can do is we can use reducer for our modified reducer function this modified reducer function now cast modified reducer function will go inside here and the initial state will directly come from here because initial state is no matter nothing so then we will get two things state and dispatch things become easy from here very very easy from here so what will happen is that we will use local storage dot get item but if the key but if there is nothing on this key because if it's our first time we have we are storing this thing then we will not get anything then we will say that please local storage set our item to this key and json just stringify our state because our local storage accepts json objects or json okay it doesn't accept javascript objects is except json so we are stringifying our object to state state and json to stringify i hope you understand what i'm trying to say and the history will be this history variable will be updated to local storage dot get item comma key okay the new thing on the new something the new item that from the storage will get but if it's already we have suppose we have already stored it and again after that we come or we revisited or reopened our application then we will get our state right as we are getting 32 again and again because already we have stored 32 now if we refresh we will obviously get 32 again right then what state okay history says that okay i am not undefined i will go to else block 
and now I will call the dispatch function to update this persist. Yes, to trigger this action and return this action dot payload. And what is our action dot payload? Is nothing. Our payload is nothing but JSON dot parse our history. And as we are parsing, we are converting and JSON to a JavaScript object by JSON dot parse. So history will what will history do? It will local storage dot get item from the key that is already existed that we already left our state for where we left our state and then we will update it and thus our state has been perfectly updated with the previous state very simple and now we will again use another effect that creates something uh, depends on the state this state depends on this state because if this state changes use effect will be called but before that we need to check if the initial state is equal to the state because if the initial state is equal to the state we will definitely not uh, do or local storage or state item okay because our if our initial state is exactly equal to the state this state is handled by our this use effect right so why should we call that same effect again and it will make our local storage empty because at first the local storage stays empty so we want to prevent that okay we don't want to Re-render and reinitialize re our state with local storage as empty state. So we will check that if this initial state object is exactly equal to the state object that this deep equal function does, and this deep equal function comes from a library, very small library, which is deep equal, and that we can install from by npm install fast deep equal. Very easy uh, task for you. So that time, what will happen is local storage just set item. So you can set that item to uh, the key that we you have defined here this key reducer name key and then new state okay the new state this time not the history earlier we passed the history but now we will not set to the not uh, set the history we will set the state right this state not history so Every time our state change, we will set our local storage to that state. Very simple, and we will return. Now we will, I want to just show that if I don't use a use callback, the function will still work, but it will show a huge performance drop down. If I show you without my this function, and then I keep here my modified reducer modified reducer then if i console.log i am being triggered and make it a string okay so you will see that it's printing again and again Oops, uh, we have a okay. So you can see that inside our console, see, I am being triggered is printing again and again, again and again, again and again. See, what a performance drop down. But now, if I keep the code. It's just same and dependency keep the dependency as same but just memoize it with callback sorry use callback okay and just give here our reducer as a dependency because it will only catch when reducer will change now if I see the our console and reload the state Uh, okay, let me see. Oops, I used callback on the wrong function. Extremely sorry, that's why it's not working. I need to use callback on this, not that. Extremely sorry, and I will say that it depends on reducer. 
okay now if i uh, trigger the function and reload see though is passed in the dependency modified reducer and is being changed again and again but see the function is not being called again and again because it is cached and it is uh, memoized this function is memoized and it will call only one time because it is dependent on the reducer and it will never change i hope you could understand why i have used use callback now more clearly so i think the video is going very very long so i think you have understand all the thing i have uh, listed here and how this uh, return state dispatch will give our modified or how we stored everything and i will also give the code in description so that you can access it if you want to use it without writing your own version of this so yeah thank you uh, for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe 